Let's start. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. My name is Alexey Romanenko, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Apache Beam and how to use cross language pipeline to execute a Python code from uh, Java with Beam. <laughs> so let's get started. Uh, a few words about me. Uh, so I'm Apache Beam, a PMC committer, and also I'm a principal software engineer at Talent. Feel free to follow me on here. A uh, quick agenda for today is uh, we'll start with uh, uh, just introduction to Beam for those who are not aware of what actually Beam is. Then I will talk uh, about uh, what actually cross language pipeline is. And uh, quick uh, again, then just a few words about Beam portability architecture, which allows us to use a cross language pipeline. Then I will show how to create an and run a cross language pipeline with Beam. Uh, finally, we'll jump into some de de uh, demo. I hope it will work. And then I will show you a use cases and uh, just to, to give some, um, uh, some, uh, sorry, some numbers of benchmarks. Uh, okay. So, sorry. Okay, introduction to Apache Beam. What actually Beam is? Uh, few words, uh, as we all know, that uh, back to the beginning of 2000, Google published MapReduce uh, paper, which uh, actually allows uh, users to develop uh, and process data in a um, distributed way. So finally, Google started to work uh, on different projects uh, to processing data internally, but all of the projects actually, unfortunately, was not available for users directly. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, different other projects started to be developed under an Apache Foundation, like, of course, uh, Hadoop and the Spark, Flink, and uh, many others. And uh, in the middle of two, I think in, uh, two tens, uh, 2010, so Google uh, opened this pro started project Google Cloud Dataflow, which actually was based on different internal Google concepts uh, uh, taken from uh, Flume and Millwheel. And finally, uh, it was decided to create open source project called Beam. And then finally, it was donated to Apache Foundation uh, in the beginning of 2016. And uh, it's in, the, in the end of 2016, it became just a top level of Apache project. So what actually BIM is? Uh, there are three main things in BIM. So the first one is a uh, which allows us to create a data processing pipeline uh, in the same way for batch processing and streaming processing. Uh, the second one is the SDK, uh, which allows us to write our pipelines with different programming uh, languages, like uh, for currently uh, supported Java, Python, and Go. And uh, this is runners. This is runners actually. Uh, which allows us to run our pipeline, which we do in the same way, on a different uh, data processing engine, like uh, Spark, Flink, Thumbza, Google Dataflow, and many others. Uh, Bing program, programming model, it's a quite uh, complicated thing, so I will not go into details, uh, so it's not a goal of this talk because we don't have too much time for that. So just a few words, uh, for 
in a way that allows us to uh, create like a four, four main types of uh, data processing pipelines. It's a classical batch when we need to, to, to have all data in the processes uh, in the end. Uh, we can also split our batch into windows and uh, then uh, to do some aggregation or some other operations per window. Uh, also, of course, streaming case. So in this case, we still need it to, to have windows, but we do not need it to wait for complete data to arrive. So in this case, we we, we, we can process and materialize results as soon as they arrive. But uh, we can have an issue with the late data, for example, and so for late data, we can uh, lose some data. So that is why we needed probably to apply a more updated um, pipeline with the streaming and accumulation. So in this case, we process late data and then uh, uh, apply it to our final result. So B allows us to create different type of pipelines with a minimal minimum modification of your pipeline. And finally, B Vision is a can consider three type of users. So of course, the, the first one is end users, actually who write their pipelines uh, in different languages and run it. And then SDK writers, in case if you want to add your language to Beam, so it's uh, uh, quite uh, easy to do. You just need to write a different SDK and the runner writers as well. So in this case, if you want to run a Beam pipelines on your supported uh, processing environment, you just need to write a runner and all other and that's and it will allow to run a beam pipeline on this. Uh, so three main things why to, to choose beam. The first one is the, it's unified, so it's only one model uh, model to handle batch and streaming processes. Uh, then it's portable, so pipelines can be created in multiple execution environments. So just uh, can run the pipeline once and run it on a different uh, the processing engines and it's extensible. So uh, again, so you can add your SDK, you can add your your runner or some libraries and uh, your connectors as well to be and it will be possible to run on a, on a different backends. Uh, quick example about how what is actually being pipeline is. This is a work current example. <laughs> Article one with Java SDK, and here you can see in the beginning we create our pipeline, and then we have uh, a call method called apply. So it apply beam transforms uh, over P collections, which we have uh, as an input and the output for this method. So in this case, we use the text IO to read the data from a file system. This is uh, our IO connector, but actually it's a beam transform. Then we call our written uh, transform called count words, where we actually count our words. Then we process this output to make it more um, user friendly for people. Write this uh, data into file with a text IO uh, into file system as well. So, pretty easy. So, it's actually cross language pipeline. Okay, uh, as I showed, it was a classical pipeline. So, why is it classical? Because it actually uses only one SDK for pipeline and runner. So, you, run, you need to run a write, write your pipeline with the same language as you want to, to use it for runner. So, for example, if you write your pipeline in Java, you should use a runner written in Java. Uh, and for other languages, uh, the same principle. But Beam supports portable pipeline. Uh, it's quite a big feature of Beam. Uh, it has been started to develop several years ago, still under kind of development, but uh, now it's uh, pretty stable. So it's possible and uh, recommended to use. But what is it? It allows actually to use a different SDK for pipeline and for runners. So our pipeline can be written with one SDK and our runner can be written with a different SDK. Very classical example is, a, for example, if you if you want to have a, our runner written in Java, in this case, we can 
it's possible to implement the pipeline in Python and then run on a Java uh, And the next step, uh, kind of logical step from that, is a portable cross-language pipeline. So in this case, we again, we can use different SDK for pipeline and for runner, but uh, inside the pipeline, we can uh, write our transform in different languages. So, uh, for example, I'll call it like a pipeline SDK. It's a main uh, SDK which we use to write uh, our pipeline. And then external SDK, uh, it could be in a different language. And in this case, it, it allows us to execute our code uh, in different languages. Uh, and for example, this is a Java Python pipeline on Spark Runner, uh, which actually Spark Runner and Beam is written in Java. So we run our pipeline in Java, but so we can add some transforms in Python. Then we run it on a portable runner with a Java API, and then it will be finally it will create a um, portable representation of our pipeline, and then it will run on a portable Spark runner. And finally, to run on Spark, of course. Uh, so, how it works? The portability. Uh, a few words, uh, just as an example for Spark. Uh, our SDK uh, will translate our pipeline into a protobuf representation via a runner API. So, uh, also, it will upload all our dependency to, uh, to the runner via your artifact API. And finally, I will be submitted to the job server. This is just a separate instance which you need to run via job API. And uh, on the job server, we have a runner which will uh, take a of re 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 representation of our pipeline and it will be translated and run this pipeline on Spark. So as you can see, job server is uh, consists from three additional services. It's called artifact staging service, expansion service, and job service. Uh, I will show in the de demo how to, to run it. A uh, little bit more details about how actually run it on a job server. Uh, so, for example, if you have a backend, uh, and possibly you have a backend, but for, for, for example, it will be Spark. And uh, when we run our pipeline in, our, in the different stages, so every transform, okay, just uh, will be translated into the stage which will run on Spark. Every beam transform, and uh, then code of this transform it will run on a it's called a SDK harness via FN API. SDK harness will be re re responsible to execute uh, transform code. So. Uh, how to run an SDK harness. Actually, it could be either implemented uh, in run via Docker or via process. So actually in Beam, we have two main types of SDK harness. This is Docker SDK harness and process SDK harness. Uh, this is example with a, with a Java, uh, Python, cross-language pipeline. Uh, Additionally, uh, to run a cross-language pipeline, we needed to uh, run expansion servers for uh, external transforms. In this case, it will be Python transform. So in this case, uh, this uh, service will uh, actually contains all uh, code of our external transforms for Python. And SDK uh, get all this information from expansion service, uh, the code to execute, some information about colors and so on, uh, to edit into our protobuf representation of our pipeline and then send it to job server. And finally, as you can see on the back end, when we will execute our stages, uh, for, for every SDK, it will run a different SDK harness. For Java SDK, it will be, of course, Java SDK harness. For Python SDK, it will be Python SDK harness. So, some advantages of portable runner. Uh, of course, uh, it's IO connectors that could be shared across different SDKs. For example, in Beam, we have a uh, last connectors written in Java. So, in, with a portable runner, they, they will be accessible uh, for Python and Go SDK as well. At the same time, Java SDK can utilize transforms from 
libraries available only for Python and Go, like uh, Tensor, Pumps, and so on. Uh, and the uh, Java, Python, Go, ZK can uh, use uh, uh, the transforms. Uh, and uh, so in this case, we, we, we can have a cross-language pipeline. GiveSQL currently is available only for Java SDK, but uh, with a portable runner, it can be available uh, by, on Python and Go SDK as well. And uh, Beam uh, TensorFlow transforms that currently available only for Python SDK, then we can utilize them in Java SDK. So in this case, actually, it uh, makes Beam really portable and uh, it's possible to use uh, to mix different uh, libraries uh, in the same pipeline. Some potential difficulties which we, we can face as a portable runner. So, uh, first of all, as I said, that uh, portability is still kind of work in progress. Uh, it's, but it's under active development, so some kind of API changes can be expected from release to release. Uh, it supports. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, we kind of, it depends on your deployment modes. Not sometimes everything works uh, depending on your mod, like uh, locally on cloud or Kubernetes. So uh, potentially it will uh, require additional configuration for that. Of course, it will also require application changes in your application architecture. And uh, it will uh, impact your uh, the performance of your pipeline. Uh, I will talk about that in the end of the presentation, and we will talk about uh, benchmarks. So, how do to run the pipeline? Okay, just to show that, uh, I created an example like how to integrate Python 3 transform into Apache Beam Java pipeline. So, this pipeline is Pretty simple. It uses kind of machine learning trained model to, to classify genres of uh, different movies. And of course, it will, since it's cross language pipeline, it will, it will use an expansion service uh, to make it possible. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, since our kind of main SDK for our client is Java, we, we create a Java pipeline and that will integrate the Java transform to read and to write data. But it also will uh, transform, it's called the genre classifier, which will be responsible actually to uh, call our classifier, which is written in Python. So this is this transform, uh, as you can see, uh, it will apply our external, external, it's called external transform, which actually will, uh, we need it to pass three different arguments, like a new RAM, uh, and uh, some payload, which actually now it's a, it, just a byte array, and the URL uh, host and port to our expansion service for this term. URL is very important because uh, it should be the same as we uh, and uh, for our external transform uh, for our expansion service. Uh, as now we needed to, to create our Python transform that actually will implement uh, method expand, uh, where we will call a classical uh, do fn, which actually will uh, contain all our business logic. But important here, I think here we see that this transform should be created with a with a, the same URM as we used on the previous step. And finally, yes, we did implement in Python our uh, do fn. Actually, we'll be re responsible to do all this classification via libraries or via our own code and so on. Uh, and finally, finally, uh, to, we need to, to add this transform to, to Python expansion service, uh, which actually just a server, GPC server, which we run. And then to provide it uh, some additional arguments to uh, like specify which type of uh, SDK, SDK hardness we, we want to use, and so on. 
How to run it? Uh, first of all, we needed to run a job service endpoint. Um, for example, for Spark Runner, we can do it in uh, two different ways. First of all, we can run just a Docker container. It's already in a Docker repository. So just, just uh, run uh, as usual with Docker run. Or uh, we can run it from a Beam source code. So you needed to download the source code, uh, code and run it uh, with this uh, Gradle command for uh, example for Spark job server. Uh, I will show it in the demo. Uh, next step, we need to run an additional expansion service for our Python transforms. So first of all, we needed to set up our Python environment. I'm following just this guide on the Gim Apache org side. And finally, we just run it uh, this uh, as usual project and provide some arguments. In this case, it will be just expansion service port. And the third step, uh, we run our pipeline. Uh, in our case, in my case, it's just a uh, Marvin. With Marvin, so we use the Marvin exec to run our uh, pipeline, where we need to provide some arguments. Uh, as you can see, we use the portable runner. And we need to provide arguments for our jobs uh, uh, service endpoint, post import, and for our expansion service. So, quick demo. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, let's try to make it to do that. Yes, I hope it's better to watch. Uh, this is a code of our pipeline, as I showed you before. Just uh, more details on this. I will scroll down to creating a pipeline. So here we create our pipeline. Uh, then we, as an input, we create just a very test in the data set. Of course, it could be data from any other sources, but I created just a very small data set uh, with, uh, with different movies. Uh, then uh, on this collection of these, these movies, I will apply our transforms for the genre classifier. And finally, I will output results with a printfm transform. It's a full one, it will just output to the system output uh data okay so what is it actually actually prior uh, transfer as you can see we use a uran plus that and uh, inside expand methods where we expand our transform in case of using the external uh transfer in our case uh, we call external transform. We pass the CRM payload, which currently is an empty byte array, and the URL from which we take from options to expansion service. And finally, our expansion service file written in Python contains this transform with the same URL which we provided on the previous step. And uh, this implementation of our DFM, it's like a it should be classifier, but of course, uh, it's a very simple one just for um, sake of tests, uh, which we kind of classify our other movies. So, and uh, in the main methods, we run our server for different type of uh, SDT hardness. Uh, in my case, I use the Docker EDK harness, but in case of using process EDK harness, it's kind of the same, but we need just to provide a different pipeline arguments for that. We need to provide an environment type, and environment config, which we actually pass to our executable with the harness, and some other options. Okay, so now I will try to Run it. Uh, okay, first of all, we needed to run a job service. 
I do it from my beam. So I thought, Okay, it's running. As you can see, actually, it launched three different services, Artifact Staging Service, uh, Java Extension Service, and Job Service, for three different ports. Uh, then we need to run Extension Service for our Python transform. We do it in a separate tab. So it runs to different ports. And finally, I'm going to run my classification pipeline with the uh, arguments, and I, which I should specify uh, job endpoint and uh, extension service for Python transforms. And uh, I will, oh, sorry, I run it. And we'll see if it works. Okay, actually it is job server endpoint, and finally it send our job to job service. There are some messages. And finally, it will run a job on the job on the spot. Spot runner. And this, of course, on the on the spot. So then it will uh, run SDP harness for Java DK first and the broker. I'm just waiting to start up. Finally, we will run a Python with the tutorials. <laughs> and actually, that's it. As you can see, is the output, we have our data which actually was uh, generated in python but finally we output it from java so first language pipeline works cool okay back to presentation uh, our use case and some benchmark so in Thailand, actually, we have a product called the Pipeline Designer, which allows the user to design a data processing pipeline in a graphical mode. Uh, so, and one of the, actually, it's again, source, sync, and different uh, components to, uh, to to process your, your data. And one of these components, uh, was uh, to put uh, allows user to write its own pattern code to do that. Uh, and there's a hook this product of uh, uses Apache Beam. And um, so initially, what's the problem with that? Why Python 3? Uh, because Python 2.7 uh, was uh, reached the uh, end of support in the end of last year, but Cure. Cure at the time, uh, our product supported only Python 2.7 with a JTON. So our component actually was written with JTON. Uh, but unfortunately, Python 3 is not a su supported uh, by JTON for the moment. So there are several options actually how to run our Python 3 from Java pipeline. Uh, and one of the approach uh, was like uh, to do it with a Beam cross language uh, transfer, as I showed you before, on a Beam portable runner. So uh, we did a POC for that and ran some benchmark to see the different numbers. And uh, uh, so uh, what the actually POC was? Well, it was like a very simple pipeline with a sourcing and a processor. Uh, sourcing uh, a based company. Uh, did, the, um, did the benchmark for different types of uh, source, as, uh, as it was in memory based or in file based, or 
memory just for small data sets and the file based for large data sets processes. And processor, sorry, it was either Java or Python based company. So just to see the, the, the difference between pure Java pipeline and cross language pipeline. Uh, so this component was pretty easy one, like it takes into record from source, uh, do some simple stream modification like to uppercase and then send this record to output scene. Uh, two uh, modes of this benchmark that uh, I did there, with a very small input data sets and a large input data sets. For a small one, the goal was to compare beam portability overhead. For Spark Runner because uh, we tested for Spark Runner, and uh, for real life input data sets, the goal was like to compare real pipelines, with different runners, portable runner and Spark Runner. And uh, I did this benchmark on my local machine, uh, so with the Spark Master uh, uh, equal local four. And the two types actually of uh, pipelines that I did. First, uh, it's the pure Java pipeline, and then a cross language pipeline. Again, just to compare with the difference, how uh, you know, external transform will affect the performance. Uh, so, some numbers for a teeny input data set, it's like a tens of records. Uh, I did it for a portable runner with a Docker SDK harness, with, for a portable runner with a process SDK harness, and for uh, classical Spark runner. <clears throat> As you can see on uh, charts uh, left and right, we see that quite a uh, big difference, actually several times, uh, for uh, between portable runner and Spark runner. So it shows the overhead of the portability for uh, if we don't take into account the, the, the time which we spend for data processing. Uh, this is what I call portability overhead. Uh, at the same time, uh, benchmark results uh, for real input data set was a bit different uh, for only Java SDK pipeline. Uh, what I did uh, again, I ran it with a portable run, but only with the process SDK harness because it was fast, faster than uh, Docker SDK harness, and uh, with against Spark Runner. I increased number of records, like uh, starting from 10 records and then uh, ended up with uh, 500,000 of records. And as you can see on the right chart, the difference is getting. Uh, lower and lower noticeable once we increase number of uh, input. And the same test uh, benchmark I did for cross language pipeline with Java Python is the uh, pipeline. So again, uh, the same number of input records. And uh, here you can see the same picture, but in the end, uh, we even uh, see that portable runner was faster with just push for runner. Well, it's kind of unexpected, but uh, the main re uh, the main kind of conclusion for that uh, this is difference kind of getting less and less noticeable, and finally, for data sets, the performance in between portable runner and uh, portable Spark runner and classical Spark runner is kind of the same. So some conclusions. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, of course, portable runner will add, add some overhead. To the pipeline time. Uh, mainly because uh, we need uh, we spend some time to run SDK harness, stock your process while it's log stage. So if you have a small data, it will be quite noticeable. Uh, process SDK harness is faster than Docker SDK harness, but of course it's still slower than just a pure Spark runner in most cases. And uh, when we, in a, with increasing of input data, this difference is getting less and less noticeable. So, uh, well, uh, for kind of real life input of data, uh, it should not be a problem. Uh, so, some helpful links, uh, which you probably just link to Apache Beam and uh, all examples which I showed you. Today, uh, I put on a Git, Git repository. 
Uh, and uh, mm, uh, if you're interested in this uh, uh, portable spark runner, I recommend you to watch this uh, talk from last ApacheCon from Ismail and Kyle. Uh, they will give you more details about actually how portable spark runner works. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, feel free to ping me on email, on Twitter. Or... Thank you. Feel free to ask any questions if you want. Okay, so if for uh, no questions, uh, again, don't hesitate to reach me here on email and uh, we'll call this session finished. Thank you, everybody. Bye.